Hello everyone and welcome to Android Bootcamp for Developers, CIT 135. So this will be your lecture. So each week you'll have the PowerPoint of the lecture, but also I'll have the video of the lecture because I'll give you a little bit more examples of what's going on, some live examples of what happens and so forth. So um, I think it'll be good that if you check out the video sec section. All right, let's see here. All right. So in this chapter, you'll learn, understand the market of Android applications, identify the role of Android devices in the mobile market, describe features of the Android phone, identify which languages are used in Android development, and describe the role of Google Play in the mobile marketplace. So kind of starting off, <clears throat> excuse me, with Android applications, it's, I mean, when it started off, it, you know, it's just like anything else. It was just the basic. It was just le people learning how to do some of the little things. But now it's gotten really robust. I mean, it's now it could be on your watch. It could be on your phone. It could be on your tablet. It could be on your TV. It could be on um, um, vehicles. What's next? I don't know. So it seems like the opportunity is very endless. The <clears throat> interesting thing with Android development is I think it'll probably be in the self-contained vehicles that they're making as well. So think about that. This language can go really far. And it's Java mixed with um, XML versus other languages. Uh, so you'll learn how to create an Android project using Android Studio, explain the role of Android Project View, specify the use of layout widgets, controls of the user interface, execute an Android application on an emulator, and open a saved Android project in Android Studio. So there's actually a video on video tutorials on week one that I presented how to create your first application. If you w watch my video demo, you'll see how the application is created through Android Studio. I'll show you some of the layouts and explain some of the little things. So some of this stuff that we're gonna cover is also in a video that I posted to the Blackboard. Um, apps, mobile applications created by for smartphones open source operating system, no company or individual defines the features or directions of development, um, open handset, ally handset alliance. Um, example here, meet the Android, uh, most popular Moto X Galaxy, Droid, OnePlus. Now these are operating systems on different um, devices. Now, as you know, this is probably a little bit older, but actually it's pretty similar. Like I have a Galaxy um, uh, tablet, so I'm able to, any app I write, I'm able to emulate it directly to the um, uh, tablet versus on screen. And we'll talk about that later. Because um, the, the emulator itself is nice because you can emulate it on the screen. But there's so many tools and different IDEs that you can use to do that as well. But just kind of giving an example of it. Um, meet the Android. So with an Android, some of the features, as you see here, it has 3D graphics. Um, the interface can support 3D graphics, um, 3D interactive games, etc. Um, it has facial recognition, which is awesome because it provides a high-level feature of automatically identifying and verifying a person's face. So let's say, for example, you create a application, and it's, um, say it's a secured application, and it's for uh, a business that entered a very important information. Let's say a bank, for example. You could have facial recognition so that you know, only that cer certain person is able to access that device. It's not where, okay, you hack a password. That's, you know, that could be hackable, but who can hack someone's facial eyes, everything, eyes, mouth, lips. So that's where it gets a little bit different. Um, the front and rear facing camera, um, you'll learn about different features that you can use a camera, uh, multiple languages that it supports, the on-screen keyboard, power management, voice base rec recognition, so you could tie the voice base and the facial re recognition together. Um, and the Wi-Fi internet tethering. One of the coolest things is I went to a Google conference, uh, I think it was about a year and a half, two years ago, at the uh, Google building in Pittsburgh. And one of the things he talked about was facial recognition. At the time, it was very new. So this is 2016. This is like 2014, summer 2014 is when I went to the conference. And they talked about the facial recognition. They talked about how it was going to be big and what they were doing it, using it for and stuff like that, such as the vehicles. And um, I just thought it was amazing. So uh, I think it's going to go so much further from that. All right. So running an Android application. Java is an object-oriented programming language. 
patterns of C++ plus language. So most of you have probably taken CIT 111 or 130 with um, Java development. If you haven't, that's no problem because some of the other videos I'll show you in the upcoming weeks, um, you know, you'll have to learn some of the basic um, basic um, techniques of Java programming. Um, and, you know, you can learn it in this class a little bit, um, but the majority of the stuff will be in other classes. Um, but the thing is, knowing the basic concept of Java programming will help you be able to program an Android um, application because the front end is using XML. It has a nice little design tool that allows you to um, create what you need to create, drag and drop and so forth, and then Java's on the back end. Um, So Android Studio is an IDE. So most of us learn what IDE is when programming in Java, such as NetBeans or Eclipse. Android Studio is um, exclusively dedicated to the purpose of creating Android applications. It includes uh, Android the SDK. So what's really cool about this is when you, in my last class, I taught um, Eclipse, which was in the book, but I also helped um, teach the students Android Studio. Clips, you had to download a clips, and then you had to go and download the SDK, and you had to do this and that. It was a pain in the butt. It was um, a lot more um, involved. Where Android Studio, you download, and it has everything integrated with it, and it makes it a lot easier to be able to get everything in place. And once again, I have a video on the tutorials on how to install Android Studio on either Windows. Um, I have an example of Windows 7, and then also have an example of how to install it on the Mac. Moving on, oops, gotta, there we go. All right, Android emulator, design, develop, prototype, and test Android apps without using a physical device. Um, so this over here kind of gives you an example of all the uh, different versions of um, operating systems that came out within, within Android. Um, the most recent that they have on here is Lollipop, which is the 5.0, but there's also a new one that they don't have listed here. It's called Marshmallow and it's 6.0. It had recently came out mm, earlier last year. So um, think about this. This will be a question that you'll see on a midterm. Um, what was the first? When was the first version released? And when's the most recent one? Which we'll, we'll just consider Lollipop, um, since we're not talking about Marshmallow. Um, here is uh, Android Studio Live. So it kind of shows you the different phones that are used to develop Android. You have your tablets. Your big tablet, your small tablet. Um, the one it doesn't have on there is I have the S3, I think it is, Galaxy. They don't have an example of that one. So, But they're basically all the same in essence. Um, getting oriented with the market deployment um, platform consists of Android OS op application development tools and marketplace. So one of the things you can kind of go to googleplay.com, um, sell and deploy apps. Um, I, it's, I believe um, it is, because last time I did it, it I'm trying to remember the price, it's maybe 25 bucks for um, the uh, subscription, the license, the developer license, the um, sell and deploy apps to Google Play. Um, like, uh, I have one for Apple as well, and it's $100 a year. Well, I can't remember if Google is $25 a year, or it's a one-time fee, I have to double check. But that's something, if, if you're interested in doing that, that's something I definitely... Um, say go ahead and get because it it's a decent price. Um, so this part right here, download, install Android Studio. I would hope by now that maybe at this point you'll go after this lecture, you'll go and and um, uh, look at a video tutorial and go ahead and install uh, Android Studio. Um, creating a Hello project in this example opens the Android Studio program. Create a new project, etc. We'll go through that. All right. So the first thing is once you click on Android Studio whether it's on your desktop or in your applications, you have a ton of different features here. Um, here's some how-to docs, configurations. If you're using, a, um, say that you developed an Eclipse, you could go here and choose import project. So you could import the project that's in Eclipse and display it in Android Studio. Um, another one is check out project from version control. This will be something that we'll do later on. In our group projects, we'll use version control so that multiple groups can look at each other's uh, code, whoever's in the group. 
um, import an Android uh, code sample. Uh, you could grab a code sample that they provide you. Um, this is just opening up an existing application. But in this, in this scenario, we're going to uh, start a new application. So you're going to click on start a new Android project. Um, next thing right here, you're going to put your application name. What do you want to call it? Company name. I recommend put something dot, you can put something dot com dot something. Um, but like your company name, whatever it is. Uh, in my case, I put Jeffrey Seaman. Um, the other thing is a project location. Where do you want to save your stuff at? And then click next. And here, as you see, you're going to choose, is this application going to be equivalent for a phone and tablet, television, where would be um, a watch, a smartwatch. And, and then this part down here is for like a glass, like Google Glass. Um, but we're, as you see here, that wasn't installed, but it, it could be possible. Um, but in this example, what we're going to be doing in this class, we're not going to do anything with the TV or the smartwatch. Um, but if you want to play around with it yourself, you're more than welcome to do it. Um, but in this example, we're usually going to choose phone and tablet. All right, and so the next option is you get to choose these different templates that you can use. Um, usually I start off with a blank activity. And what's nice about the templates, they come with templates, but you could also um, go out and find templates for free online that you could use or create your own template. Um, activity main, in this section, you're just going to put main activity. Um, you could call it something else if you like. Uh, default is main activity. You could call it whatever you want to call it. Um, layout name, come up with a layout name that you're going to use. That's where your um, layout template that's going to be used across the board is going to be used at one central location. Um, same thing with your title, come up with a title and a resource name and hit next. And now here's the emulator, or well, here's uh, Android Studio. As you see, there's a ton of different things there going on. You have your file menu at the top. You have your app right here. You have your play button. Um, you have your uh, um, Android, what uh, versions you have installed. Um, you have your emulator settings. Over here is all your project stuff. As you see, res, layout. So think right here, activity main um, .xml. When you click on that, you'll get this type of screen. You see how like you have the screen right here. You have all your options, um, uh, drag and drop. Um, sometimes when you click on this, you might get some uh, funky message down here. If you do get a funky message, come up here where it says the, what version of Android is and choose a lower version. Sometimes the most recent, such as 21, is not able to compile. So go down to maybe cookies and cream, like a 14 or a 16, you'll notice that your page will compile fine. But also remember that your activity is your main file, so that's your XML file. You have layouts, your drawable, um, and your values, and so forth. And then your job is where your code goes, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but remember, this is all your, um, your palette, your widgets, etc. So you could kind of drag and drop stuff. Um, here's all your properties windows and your component tree. And then here's your emulator. So whatever emulator that you chose, You'll be able to see that and you could um, go in your code, type in stuff and see it on the screen here. But next, um, interface must not uh, distract from functionality. Java code or XML layout um, files are needed. As you see here, um, kind of the Java folder contains Java source code. So, for example, when you were uh, programming in Eclipse or NetBeans, I think there was a source folder. It had all your Java files, so it's kind of similar to that. Um, res folder contains images, music, and video. So anytime you want to put music and videos, you would put it in here, and then it be you would draw down to the drawable and so forth. Um, we talked about the An Android Manifest XML um, layout. We talked about that. The widget or your buttons or text. Uh, the properties over to the bottom right. Android Studio displays an emulator. We talked about that. Um, this right here, step one, tap on, click the virtual device to render your layout. So we clicked it and then it renders it at, based off the Nexus 5. Um, step two, in the emulator, select the text, the, the, the default text view that you want to see. So you just kind of click on this guy right here and you can choose the properties window or if you double click on it, you can pull up the XML and be able to view it that way as well.
All right, so if you scroll down to the properties pane, you could display the text. Um, step one, Android project view, tap or click to expand. So as you see here, if you click and expand the XML, it's kind of hard to see from here, but when you pull up the, um, the lecture, you'll be able to zoom in a little bit, but you can see here's where your XML is located at. Um, double tap or click the string. Um, tap or click and open editor link to the right of the project. Displays the translation editor tab. As you see right here, you have your default name, translation editor tab, close buttons, default value, and hello variable name. As you see here, a little bit closer on the XML, you see it has a it's just a plan all XML. You can come in here and change this information around. So instead of hello, my first Android app, you can say hello, my name is Jeff Seaman, something along that lines. Um, the text view controls displays the modified text emulator. So you could also type in your text here as well. So you could double click on it, highlight it, and type in something or go over to the properties window. Um, when you're getting ready to run your app, you click on always say the play button up here. Um, it'll bring up this launch emulation. One thing is, let's say that you have an Android phone or tablet. You plug it into your computer using USB. It will pull up your device and say, hey, do you want to use your Samsung or whatever, or do you want to use one of the um, uh, Android virtual devices? Um, so in your case, if you don't have an Android, then what you want to do is make sure that you've set this up to use um, whatever device is available, and we can go through that as well. Um, this is just showing that you've had different de devices to choose from. We choose the, um, the device, and once it comes up, it will say charging, so you want to right click, left click with your mouse, and just kind of drag it over. Um, let's see here, step four, tap, click, OK button. We've got past that part, and here we are. Um, Hello world, my first Android app. It wasn't that complicated to come up with that. But once you watch my video, it's a little bit more uh, um, easier to uh, watch because it goes, it's a video, goes step by step. Um, summary, OS is released under a full OS. Um, Android OS powers all types of power devices. To write apps, you can use Android Studio, a dedicated development environment for building Android applications using Java. Well, one of the things I'll um, point out here is if you're familiar with um, ASP.NET, they have Visual Studios 2015, and they have an emulator that allows you to write Android Studio code within that, and you can actually write it in a different programming language called C Sharp, and there is a, uh, I can't remember the name of the company that they use, but there's a third party company that you use to allow you to write in C Sharp, and then what's nice about that is you write your app in C Sharp, if you're familiar with that, and it pushes it out and, and creates code for Java, and it creates code for Objective-C. You have one app, and it can run on multiple um, platforms. Um, I can't remember the name of that. Um, Android emulator lets you design, develop, prototype, and test apps. And then, as you see here, it consists of the OS that um, is used by Google Play. And I think that is it for our first lecture. Yes, so that is um, that concludes our first lecture. It was pretty cut and dry as you went through it, um, but I would recommend that you go through the uh, video that I created on how to create your first application. But um, make sure you're using a Windows or a, or a Mac computer. If you're using a Linux and you're having problems, please reach out to me. Um, email me, um, text me, whatever the case is, um, and best of luck. Thank you.